Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Adobe Live. I'm here with our esteemed guest, Christine Arth. Oh, wait, wait a second. Who's in there? Oh, it's Claude Pichet. What's up, in the guys? House. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> if you're wondering, That's, this jacket is very hot. Yeah, it's super hot. <laughs> so we're I here will. for day three of Creative Campaign. Uh, this, unfortunately, is our last day. But Claude's going to be wrapping up his mobile app for the music festival today. Um, just very briefly, if this is your first time joining us, this is what's going on. Christine, who isn't here with us, it's Claude. <laughs> but she designed uh, an entire uh, design brief and a bunch of assets for us. And we've had three professional designers tackle the design brief from three different angles in their respective fields. So earlier, right before this, we were live with Christine, who worked on some collateral and some posters. Uh, we're live right now with Claude, who's gonna be finishing up his app. And then right after this, we'll be live with Caitlin, who will be creating stage graphics and some motion graphics, all centered around Are You Out There Music Festival, inspired by everything David yeah. Bowie. I think it's also worth mentioning that the first day of these live streams was David Bowie's birthday. Yeah. The last day of the live streams, unfortunately, it's is the anniversary yeah. of the day that he yeah. departed from Earth, so. And this was not, like, we didn't plan yeah. that at all, right? Totally, so. totally by coincidence. I'm, I like the jacket, I think. You're gonna leave it I on? I like the jacket. Yeah, it looks how good. Much, how much is it? I, I wanna <laughs> buy it. Sale. It's pretty nice. <laughs> it's a little warm though, but, uh, so I'm gonna take it off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, while Claude, while Claude does that, <laughs> we've got uh, some challenges for you. Or no, we're doing portfolio reviews today. So if you're watching and uh, you would like to get some feedback, I know a lot of you do like to get feedback. Uh, all you need to do is share your portfolio with us. We ask that it have something to do with UI and UX design yeah. because that's Claude's. Please, uh, yeah, please share know. the portfolios. It's always good to uh, gather some feedback and get some feedback from, from us yeah. and just show your work in general is always uh, really great. Right, and it can be kind of scary, but we'll, we're, we're friendly guys. We're like, nice we're, people. Yeah, we're, yeah. We'll like to, we like to give you feedback, help you improve your like design sense and also your ability to present your work online. So that's one of our goals for today. Uh, then we'll also be doing another chat and win giveaway in about 30 minutes. So stick around and you could win a gift card to moo.com. Um, so with that, you want to like go ahead and do a quick intro. I know by now everybody yep. knows you pretty well, and this is your fourth time on the live stream, so yep. you're our resident pro. But yeah, yeah. So jump in. so my name is uh, Claude Pichet. Uh, I started at Adobe six months ago. I work on the Adobe Spark team, so I, I encourage everyone to go and uh, take a look at Spark. It's a really cool tool, um, and it's pretty new too. So we would love to get your feedback on how to make this tool better. Mm -hmm. Um, I come from the agency background. I used I work in UX UI now for like seven to eight years. Um, so ask me any any questions about uh, experience or my process in general. I would be more than happy to share some some thoughts and experiences with you. Um, so we have a, a first question. What is Spark? So <laughs> Spark is a Adobe Adobe tool that um, launched I think two years ago, uh, and it allows everyone to uh, create. Uh, social media posts, uh, videos, and also pages, uh, and in a really, really easy uh, way. So anyone, it's that overall thing is everyone can be a designer mm -hmm. or everyone can produce social media um, assets. Uh, so I did a demo that you can look on uh, day one and day two that shows how Spark works. But basically, um, someone like Christine would, would come up with the branding for a entire festival. And then you can upload your brand assets into Spark, and then you can uh, let let the power of Spark using their, those brand ingredients and making uh, tons of templates, and then that you can share with your whole marketing team, so then they can uh, play with it and work with it. Right. We kind of talked about how it really speeds up that middle process. Exactly. Yeah. But it still requires some design work on the front end to make sure you have your assets and your you know all of your design brief put together. Yeah. So. Exactly. It doesn't necessarily replace the the need to design. Not it at just all. Makes it way way quicker once you have your design. Yeah. Cool. The, there will always be a need for some some pure artists, create creators. So uh, it's just a sometimes the time consuming task that you don't really want to do. Trent, I used to make those banners for all the different sizes, all the different languages. So um, we're 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 there to streamline that that, nice. that workflow. Cool. Good question, Eric. And by the way, uh, big hello and a big shout out to Eric. We've got Hobby in chat, Lucian, uh, Alberto, Kevin's back. He's been here all three days. Uh, we've got Dustin, Ash, our good friend here all the time also. Afroja is here. 
Uh, thanks for joining us, everyone. Thanks for joining. We ben, always good to see you. We we'll always want to know where you guys are from. Uh, we're, we're always curious about that. So please tell us where you're from too. Yeah, please jump in there. Uh, I'm from Columbus, Ohio. So I'm from not. Montreal, Quebec. Nice. So we're, neither of us are from San Francisco, where <laughs> yeah, we currently exactly. are. So yeah, jump in, let us know. And uh, while they do that, let's give them like a quick, like <clears throat> brief on what you've worked on on day one and day yeah. two, and then we'll jump into what we'll work on today. Yeah. So uh, on day one, I went in depth into the, this experience map that uh, really was was the first step for me in my research process to um, to tackle this problem or this this idea of an app for a music festival. Doing experience map uh, is a really great uh, technique uh, to map out the ups and downs of experiences. Uh, so you can watch this on on day one to uh, to get the the full in depth research there. Mm -hmm. Um, I also shared out that, that um, you need to do some research and sometimes research can be really scrap, kind of scrappy and you can go really guerrilla style. So I shared I shared out um, a story on Instagram of what 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 type of features should be um, in a in a music festival app. So I got some answers and you could already see some trends of like like people know what they want. It's just a matter sometimes of asking them mm -hmm. the right questions that are going to provide you the answers. Right. Um, and then we talked about a. Uh, a lot of uh, features that can be in a music festival app uh, and how those features are mapping to the experience. Uh, the overall concept of this app is that it's going to change over time. Uh, so there's some features that might be uh, better before the festival. Some of them might become really handy during the festival and after afterwards. Let's let's try to keep those customer in the loop. Yeah. Like while the festival is over, we don't want to lose them. We have their interest already. Mm -hmm. How they can purchase uh, tickets for next year right. and stuff like you that. You don't want them to use it for like two days and then never open it again or delete it off their phone. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I'm going to skim uh, through real quick. These were some of the sketches that I showed up on day one as well. Uh, on day one, we covered that homepage design uh, before the festival and during the festival. We also um, yesterday did uh, some cool interaction going with the ticket there. Uh, we played with the lineup builder yesterday. Um, and then uh, today, I'm actually pretty excited because we're going to do some really cool dead. stuff with uh, <laughs> the interactive map um, and also with the auto animate feature, one of the latest feature that XD released uh, at Max. Mm -hmm. um, so this will be pretty interesting. It's a really creative way to use it. And we're going to also play with some, uh, some voice feature that right. we've been uh, planning a little earlier. So just to show really quick what I've been building, uh, so this is a prototype. This was the home page. We had a countdown there. You can swipe between the different cards to see the different um, lineup, the headliners there. So this is using the auto animate and also the on drag um, interaction. So mm -hmm. once you tap on it, then you get more details about a certain band. I added in there the set list nice. with the different songs of Bowie. Um, so you could maybe get a preview of what what songs they're gonna sing during their list that might change your interest there mm -hmm. and then you come back um, so I did that and then we also worked on that ticket interaction too so we got a really cool ticket that was designed by one of you in the chat yep, on, on day one uh, and we integrated that ticket in there so you can see that nice little wind up mm -hmm. animation there that just makes it really organic and really uh, fun to uh, to play with the ticket uh, we also played with the schedule builder there and we we tried <laughs> to do something pretty cool with that um, so this this whole idea there was to <laughs> build your lineup in advance yep. uh, of the festival so we showcase the different uh, bands there and then when you type on a certain icon you can see really I might just change oh, I'll do it again just to showcase but um, yeah, on tap, you have cool. that little, little micro interactions. So it's these electric. were some pretty, um, yeah, <laughs> super electric. So the, it's matching your shirt, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was inspired <laughs> by the design. So uh, it all, all shows like how you can. So this this overall idea of the creative campaign and having Kristen come up with a brand. Mm -hmm. it And now like every other professional that would be on that team can leverage all of the assets that she built and use them right. to to really put the brand inside of the app. Mm -hmm. uh, so on tap, you can see that little animation. Right. And we've tasked 
all of the viewers too. We've given them, they have the same assets and information that you do as a designer, at least on the first two days. And we said, hey, create assets for us. And that's where the ticket came from. Yep. And I mean, if you're gonna watch these replays, uh, you'll be able to find the assets again and you can play around with them and create a ticket or create a poster or exactly. you know, contribute to this overall goal of collaboration and working on a team. So definitely feel free to get involved that way. And then once you hit done, you would select a few man, that, uh, that's the idea. And then once you would hit done, you could see then uh, this in a timeline. So you have your own personalized a lineup or agenda for that festival so nice. you could see where you are during time too i like that little uh, mm -hmm. feature around showing how many minutes left to a certain show so maybe you can leave a bit in advance and go to your second show yep, yep. Um, so all sorts of stuff that we can think about there we had a lot of answers from where people were tuning in from nice awesome and i'm gonna read some i think we had puerto rico we had missouri uh we had here we go, I'm getting to it right now. We've got Cleveland, Ohio. That's Esther again, returning for her third day, I think, this week. Cool. Hector's tuning in from it. Mexico. We've got UK, Ontario, Hamilton, Ontario. Ontario. Nice. That's We've close got from home. St. Augustine, Florida. That's where Jason's tuning in from. Uh, Tana is tuning in from Brazil. We've got Korea, Morocco, Charlotte, North Carolina, India. Man, all over that's, the world. It's cool. I want to know who's the furthest away from San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you need cool. to play with a map to do that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, today we're going to, like I said, we're going to do that interactive map. So they're going to be a lot of work. Um, so I might have some some downtime mm -hmm. here and there. But basically, um, one of the biggest point of friction that we had from our research was um, to get some directions. And also, like, how can I navigate? Because f festivals can be really, really crowdy. And you never know really where you're going. Yep. Um, uh, s signalization inside the festival might be sometimes a little, like, uh, confusing. Mm -hmm. So we thought about building an interactive map that would allow every attendees to really navigate uh, the, the, the site really nicely. Right. So we have that map there showing the entrance. Uh, we're going to have the parking in there. We're gonna have the different stages, and uh, Christine was really good about like ha adding all of those uh, fictive stages and fictive bands and stuff. So this really uh, was was easy for me then to just like add in the different icons yep. and, you, and, and, you, and make it all fict. You fictive. downloaded the map, but added the icons and the exactly. Text. Yeah, okay, cool. So I used a tool called Mapbox um, to grab a screenshot of the map. Um, this is actually in Joshua Tree, um, so cool. it's. The actual like the jumbo rock nice. uh, campground so i think it would be i went there a few times so i think it, it would re legit really work cool. there cool. so um so what i'm gonna do is that i'll get uh i'll start designing and i'll start to to put some yeah. stuff in there i'm excited to see it come together we've got more people sharing where they're from indianapolis reporting in says derek and leo from virginia is standing by so we've got we've got a lot of designers tuning in from different time zones, East Coast, and then awesome. across the sea, and then different countries, different continents. And as as Claude's designing this uh, map experience for the app, if you have questions, like he said earlier, just feel free to ask them, and we'll get to them, and um, you know try and give you the best insights that we can. So what I'm doing right now is that um, I'm just going to put a little like a nice uh, gradient in the background there. I'm gonna get rid of that top header that I had on the most part of the app right now, because mm -hmm. this will be a, just the full map will be in there. Cool. So really similar to Google map or Uber even mm -hmm. has a, like it's always taking over the, the whole space. Got it. So this will add a nice effect. Uh, we're gonna get rid of this because we're gonna put a search later there. It's interesting with UI and UX design how if you're designing something right, this is very unique for this festival, but you're thinking about other apps that have done something similar because people are, they're used to, like they're accustomed mm -hmm. to a certain yeah. type of experience yeah. and you don't want to create friction that doesn't need to be there. Exactly. Right? Um, leverage what's out there and what yeah. people are already doing and it's like the overall goal of this is to know where you're going. Who's right. doing that great? Well, 
Google is doing a pretty good job at that. So <laughs> why don't we leverage and 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 uh, leverage some some of the UX patterns that they use and and introduce right. this into our experience. And in the past, we've even we've done this on stream, but we also encourage designers to take like take Google Maps and then break it down. Yeah. Like do a master study, like recreate it, yep. make your own artboard, I play like with that. the assets, and it'll really it'll help you wrap your mind around the design decisions that whoever's working on Google Maps made so that when you go to do something similar, you can use some similar principles. Yep. But I think that's what you basically did, but in short, because you're really familiar with it already. Yep. So what I did there too, uh, another uh, great thing about XD, it's, it's re really easy to, it's part of the Adobe family, so it's really easy to navigate from Photoshop, Illustrator, or any other tool and paste stuff in and out from mm -hmm. XD. It always works really nice. Uh, they also introduced that really cool feature uh, about exporting your prototype to After Effects yep. so if you want to get really granular with some really neat animation. So mm -hmm. encourage you to, to play with that. Yep, you can open PSD files, Illustrator files directly in XD, and you can export animations to After Effects. So this is a bit big. Hi Hiroshi from Brazil, thanks for joining us. Tom LaRock who shared a very cool illustration with us yesterday from Miami Beach, Lucian, and Heather are both from Romania. And Karina's from Brazil too. Thanks for joining us. And thanks for letting us know where you're coming in from. All right, so I'm gonna design this little search box there. 40 pixel high. It's also worth mentioning that in 14 minutes, no less than that, in 13 minutes, we'll be doing something we call chat and win, and it'll be your chance to win a special prize. And if, if you know, I'll just give it up right now. It's $30 <laughs> gift card to moo.com, so you might want to stick around for that. All you need to do is be active in chat on behance.net slash live. So if you're watching on YouTube, jump over to Behance, come say hi to us, and you could win a prize. Do we have a, a question today? Or just I'll start active. thinking of it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I was thinking, let's do a fun one today. Okay. Because we've done some like share your design aesthetics yep. with us and things like let's let's make it kind of goofy today. Cool. And if you have one, please feel free. Yeah. Um. So um, I have here uh, one one really cool tool that I use a lot. It's called Font Awesome. I bought the the real version there, and it's a tool that I I really like to share with people because. Not everyone knows about it, and mm -hmm. it's been such a, a time saver for me while I in my career so far. So I really like to to show that. Uh, it's basically a font that um, uses icons, so everything about like your UI can mm -hmm. be done with those icons. I really highly recommend. They're really cool icons, and there's also different styles to them. Mm -hmm. So, and it also works that way where it works like a font. You go in there and then you just type in microphone and it's going to switch it to the actual icon. It's That's like so pure easy. magic, really uh, easy to use. And did you, how did you integrate that with XD? Like, how did you make that so seamless? You just download the program? Yeah, you, down, you download the font, it's an mm -hmm. actual font. Yep. And then when you select a font in XD, nice. then you can type in the word and it's going to put everything wow, that's in so there. Easy. So you put a car, you can put anything in there. You got to know some of the icons, Do you ever but test um, it? Like, there's a cheat banana. sheet there. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, I don't know. Ban? Oh, so you... Ban, man, no. Yeah. See, we didn't have it. Oh, I think it's a... It did the ban symbol. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I see. That's interesting. All right, so that works. Then... Mohammed says, just trying to get some techniques about XD. This is a great place for you. Um, you'll get plenty of techniques from Claude, so if he does something that you think looks cool or you have a question about it, feel free to ask us. And then, if you want to get some more instruction, we're actually going to be having UI and UX streams all next week. And very soon, we'll be starting uh, an XD Daily Creative Challenge. So just get in the loop with us, stay tuned. You can subscribe uh, for email notifications if you just hover over the player and click that blue button that says subscribe. Um, and, you know, we'll be in touch with you and we can help you improve your XD uh, toolkit. Yeah, we're going to show you a really cool way to use um, the auto animate feature and with some timing uh, interactions. Mm -hmm. I think too, like we said yesterday and the day before, like 
Uh, when you're dealing with timed interactions and animations, a lot of times it's just like tweaking and figuring out how yeah. it works and, and figuring out the toolkit so that when you want to do something that's outside of the box, you know how to approach the problem. So I think just watching you tackle some of these problems could be like very useful for people that are trying to design cool. something similar. All right, so that, we have that. That's the, like, that's the base of my map. But one thing I want to do is that I'm going to add in some cards uh, on top that we're going to we're going to swipe and this is going to navigate uh, to the different, uh, how would you say that, like locations of yeah, that yeah. or different um, stages and, and restaurant and stuff. So. That makes sense. Kevin has a question while you're doing that. He says, do you think the map design is on brand when you're considering colors, etc.? Yeah, uh, so it's, that's a really good question because um, I've been playing a lot with it. Um, I had, I was playing with some, some, some funkier looking yeah. maps um, on Mapbox. I can show you real quick. Um, but after playing a lot, I, I like there was some dark ones like that that worked mm -hmm. kind of well. Um, and then there was some really cool one that like this is a pop that art one. is a pop art yeah, one. Yeah. Um, so. I think it's okay to be sometimes a bit off-brand and mm -hmm. focus more on like usability and, and and clarity when you when you play with the actual map. Um, the icons could be a little more like grungier and more like on-brand. Sure. Yeah. We didn't have the unfortunately have the time to create all of those icons right now. Right. Uh, but that's that's a really good question. Yep. I, yeah, I, I agree. And I think you had mentioned this yesterday too. Like uh, right now you're kind of like in play mode, like you're experimenting and designing yeah. and seeing if it works. But let's say for instance, this becomes a real festival. You might go back and polish some things exactly. and add icons that are a bit more custom. So. Yeah. But right now the main priority is to basically create and prototype yeah. an interactive map in XD and to show everybody how that's done. It's showing you a bit of design and prototype mm -hmm. and some thinking at the at the same time. Yep. Uh, Clarence Young says, Suh dudes. <laughs> Do you know <laughs> Clarence? No. <laughs> Suh dude. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Thanks for being here. So, okay. So now I'm going to quickly switch from design to prototype just to show you really quick the type of effect that we'll, we're going to start building here. Uh, so if I tap in on prototype, this is the really cool thing about XD is that you design and prototype at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so it really accelerates the process and really that overall uh, thinking about designing at the speed of thought is like nailed down in yeah. XD, like you can r really fast experiment, move things around. We saw yesterday when I, I played on my phone, we can maybe show a little later, yep. but everything is so instant. Um, so just it just really streamlined the, the workflow. Yeah, the idea is like you don't want the program to get in the way of yep. your creative process. And it, in every way it should like enable you and empower you to make the decisions exactly. that you want to make. And I think XD does a great, like there are very, like very few moments in XD where I felt friction, where I'm like, oh, I don't know where to go or what to do. So I think they've done a great job. Yeah, super easy to use. Anthony says, suh, suh, dude. <laughs> we got a bunch <laughs> of dudes in chat. <laughs> so Clarence, we're using Adobe XD, which is the Adobe's latest uh, software for uh, screen design and prototyping. Yep. Uh, Kevin, feature idea, find your friend's position on the festival map. Yeah, we'll That's do that. Interesting we'll do that, that later. That, that yep. was something that was re was asked, and we'll do this with some some uh, some voice interaction. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned for that. You might even have to sing into your phone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Alex. Alex Mackey's in the house. Good to see you. Thanks for being here with us. Uh, if you're just joining, like Alex is, we're live right now with Claude who is designing a mobile app for a fictional, might be real in the future, <laughs> music festival inspired by David Bowie called Are You Out There? So he's been working on various components of the app throughout the week, and right now we're working on the inter interactive map. And my name's Gus, I work for the Adobe Live team here, and I'm here just to read your questions and make sure that the stream's running smoothly. And you have less than five minutes to get in chat on behance.net slash live if you want to win a Moo gift card. So jump into chat, 
Say hi to us and stay active. You'll have a chance to win. Uh, Shashank is wondering, do you keep your initial designs pixel perfect? So yeah, like like you were mentioning a little earlier, um, we're kind of in in of that create creating mode and like moving fast mode right now. We we move from sketches all the all the way to high fidelity to des design. Um, so right now it won't be pixel perfect, but it will like be close enough to validate the validate validate the the concept of the app. Right. And once this is done, like it's always like. To move fast, you gotta sometimes a bit cu cut some corners, and mm -hmm. once you get your like green light and approvals, then you can like yeah. take the time to make make stuff pixel perfect. Mm -hmm. um, so at, at this point, we're still pitching it. Yep. So got to get your pitch right. Yep. You got to <laughs> pitch it right. <laughs> it is really important. You don't want to waste hours and hours of time designing something that doesn't work. Exactly. I mean, at least for me, I don't like to lose my time, so. No, no, we're all pretty busy. Emma, thanks for joining in. Nice to see you in chat. See that already? Leo says, this is lit. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm doing here, have you here is that I'm using a really, really large image that I throw in the background. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm actually gonna just move the image mm -hmm. uh, in my artboard. And that's how we're gonna, we're achieving this, this cool effect. So you can see nice. there, so, that's, so we can zoom in and out, move left to right, and we're, it's gonna add a lot of like, I don't know, I think it's- I love it, some, yeah. Some good butter, you're, call yeah. it butter. You're using, <laughs> like you're using, you know how auto animate works, and yeah. you're using it to your advantage. Exactly. There's other ways you could tackle that problem, but I think this is obviously the easiest. Yeah. And I think it works and looks really buttery. Buttery. <laughs> uh, Fanis is here, says, hey there, nice content, <laughs> keep it up, thanks for being here with Thank us. Thank you. Claude is rocking it all week. We're really happy to have him with us. And like I mentioned earlier, this is his fourth time with us, so he's very much a pro by now. Lesite, yeah. go Picho! <laughs> What's up? I, so I used to work at Lesite. I, oh, really? I worked uh, as a designer there. Uh, they make Magento websites. Nice. Magento, oh, part, part of the Adobe family now. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing this is probably JP. So what's up, JP? Hey, JP. <laughs> Thanks for being here. We have some questions about um, if people are beginners or they currently focus on graphic design or a different field. Do you have any recommenda recommendations how they might <coughs> translate those to UI and UX design? Give it a shot. Yeah. Oh, like, I don't know. Uh, if you're a graphic designer, I think the trans transition is pretty easy. I would probably try to read some articles, uh, like read a few books, but using XD and just starting to uh, make things move a bit more. And XD is so like easy. The, the learning curve is really, really easy. So I really encourage people that like just just go open the the, the software. Yeah. Try it. Draw, like draw a few <laughs> boxes, connect the dots in between, and you'll you'll quickly know that you'll quickly get really creative with it. Yeah. So that's. I, the, I think you had a good suggestion, and maybe it was on day one about um, if you open up apps and you start thinking about like the the build and the experience yeah. and thinking, oh, I would have done this differently, or yeah. I wouldn't change that. It's a good indication that you might already kind of be on the wavelength you need to be on to be a UX designer or yep. a UI designer. So if you're already thinking that way, then maybe then try experimenting and playing around, maybe deconstructing an app that you really like and figuring out how it works yep. and, and rebuild it. Uh, so that can be a great place to start. We've got Geekopedia Hub in here. Thanks for joining us. Nice to see you. They say, nice design, Claude. Thank you. So I'm going to bring my sketch a little closer so I can refer to the content I want to put there. <clears throat> so major pavilion. So what I'll do is that I'll always place this right above. So it's gonna always target to the right icon as I'm gonna move and, and swipe through the different cards. It's just gonna make it really smooth and clear for, for the user too. Mm -hmm. Oops. <clears throat> they have less than one second. Come on, it's summit, time. summit. Okay. So here's the deal. See these fireworks? Those mean it's chat and win time. This is your chance to win a $30 gift card to mood.com. All you need to do is get in chat and say something to us. 
Maybe you can answer the question of what your favorite David Bowie song is. If you don't have a favorite David Bowie song, give Claude a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, here we are. Let's see those right. compliments. Let's see those favorite songs. Get in chat, behance.net slash live. Log in, say hi. You've got probably a minute to do so. We'll be picking randomly from everybody that's active right now. Let's go, let's, let's go, there. let's go. This is lit. <laughs> Man who sold the world. We got a favorite song in Excuse there. Me. Good app. Hello, win, win, Great win. Great hair, thank you, thank you. Great hair. <laughs> Choose me, boom, oh snap. Heroes, under pressure. Nice. Come on, come Loving on, come alien. on, more, more, more. Life let's go, on let's Mars. Go. Claude has been killing it all oh, week. thank you. <laughs> Got a compliment. Please oh pick me. I'm not going to be able to go out the room. My head's going to be too big. You're famous. <laughs> <laughs> the people love you. They said so. You're like a brother to them. Big brother, big brother designer. All right, we got our winner. All right. Would you like to read the name? Michelle Catherine. Michelle Catherine, congratulations. You are the winner of a $30 gift card to Moo.com. We'll contact you on Behance via direct message very shortly, so be on the lookout for that. And everybody else that didn't win, stick around for the next stream because Paul's going to be live with Caitlin right after this doing motion graphics, and you'll have another chance to win another gift card. So that's it, man. Cool. That's Perfect. our last chat win of the week. To, let's get back to work. I love giving away prizes, yeah. man. I wish we could give away more. I guess I'll have to wait till next week or next time I host. Stage. Adobe Live is looking for Catherine. Michelle Catherine. Are you here? Are you out there? Are you out <laughs> there, Catherine? Are you out there? Ground control to Major <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> I guess it could just be Michelle, Catherine. <laughs> Kevin says, that's why I don't play lottery. <laughs> Kevin's been trying to win all week. I'm sorry, Kevin. Eventually, you will indeed win. I'm sure. So we're going to also add this nice gradient to the bottom. There she is, Michelle, Catherine. Smiley face with some exclamation points. Congratulations. Congrats. I All like right. that um, also XD. It's a really, really small feature, but just the flip, the flip tool. It's brand new it, too. It's brand new. But yeah, that was December they it's added. It's pretty cool. And I think it everyone easy. thought for a while, like, where's the flip? Where's the <laughs> yeah. flip? And they just like put it in there like, oh, don't worry, it's there. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people sometimes are like, it's missing those like super small feature, but you, you guys have to know that XD has been built up from the ground up, like yeah. not following any of other uh, Adobe tools. Yep. Um, and I'm, that's why it I, I functions think, so smoothly. Yeah, yeah, so fast. And and as they, my big wish is that as they add in like all of those like really new cool features, I hope and, and, and I'm sure that it's <laughs> on their, their um, roadmap that the speed and performance will always maintain because yeah. as designers we like to move fast we don't like when stuff are crashing no. it's spreading some pretty pretty bad um moment of friction i think and so far they've been keeping keeping yeah. the speed up they've set the bar very high in terms of speed and usability ease of use and i think they plan to maintain it i think what's really cool to that effect is they're they've built xd especially this last full year just right alongside the community. So people are giving yeah. feedback, putting in requests for features, and we've had live streams where we design things live on stream, and there are forums you can go to, like user feedback, where you can just interact with the yeah. designers yeah. and with the tool and Talk really them. turn yeah. it into something that's useful for you and probably thousands of other designers. At the end of the day, they, they're building this for you. They're not yeah. building this for, them, for themselves. So right. I really Although encourage they all you use it. <laughs> to, yeah, to talk to Talon, Alex, and a bunch of the XD people. They're cool people. Yep, yep. It's funny, though, because they use they use XD to design XD. So there's a bit of an inception going on there. Yeah. Leo says, uh, shape builder tool in XD someday, I hope. Well, if there's a feature request on user voice, you can vote it up and put some comments and try and get that going. And everybody jumped in there. 
Clarence is wondering if it's free. Yes, it is free. All you need to do is download the starter version of XD. There are, there's one or maybe two very small limitations. One of them is that you can only publish one live prototype link at a time. Other than that, you have access to the full tool. So um, download it and play around with it. Like Claude said, maybe you'll yep. figure out you really love UI UX design. So one thing I want to add on those small um, cards is kind of a, we were, we've been talking about that yesterday about the indicator. So waiting or there's, some of the top frictions are around waiting in line and also like do you want to join a stage that is super crowded versus less crowded mm -hmm. sometimes it can influence your decision so that's right. why we're going to include this in the app so you know this overall app is to guide you through the festival and re mm -hmm. really be that companion experience for you so so i was thinking how that would be done logistically and i just had a brain blast okay let's what go if, what if you know how like uh, Google Maps uses like real time data yep. to tell you how traffic is? Like we ping people's phones like via GPS and it tells us like there's like a lot of phones in this area yep. for a line or for a concert. Yep. That's And you, then we just know. You're you're on it. Yeah. This we're gonna build that could, this. That could be <laughs> super cool. We just we're just ripping off Google Google Maps. <laughs> but I think it's cool to apply that to a completely different different arena. Andre says, Andre says, hi guys, great work. I have a question. What's the minimum font size that you use in your projects? Is there a point where on you mobile, say that's too small? Uh, on mobile, I would say that 12 is probably the smallest I would go. Um, but I'm pretty sure if you, you check some, some best practices uh, articles online, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to find that yep. just out of my head right now. I've been designing a lot for, for web and desktop lately, so it's I'm a bit out of sync with some mobile right, stuff. Right, right. And I think you can, especially like if you save your project and you play with it on your phone, you can usually tell when you're doing testing if the font is too small. You'll yeah. realize, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to make this bigger. So sometimes that's, that's teased out uh, when you're actually testing the app with users. So this is getting pretty smooth. Like butter? Like butter. Bam, One baby. thing I want to do, and this is some, some trick you can do with uh, auto animate, is basically you group, you always make sure that's, I, I ran into this uh, issue a lot when I started to play mm -hmm. with the feature, so now I can share with you guys. Yeah. Um, you got to group your stuff and name, name it uh, really clearly so that uh, in between artboards, the um, software recognize that it's the same element that you're trying to move in. It's going to make that transition and fill the gaps between the two. Right. That's super important. You have to use the same, the same asset, like the same name. Copy and paste works great. If you change them between artboards, then I can't make the connection. So this will work. Maybe we can add some of that more stylish fonts. Mm -hmm. Ten Moy, good uh, question about the Adobe Residency. If you're watching and you're curious, the Adobe Creative Residency applications are currently open right now. You can apply nice. to it. It's an amazing opportunity, especially if you're trying to get your feet wet as a designer and start your career and make connections. Adobe gives you a salary for a year flies you to amazing conventions, gives That's you a mentor, awesome. <laughs> like everything you need to succeed in your respective field is provided for you. And then you just take it and run with it for a year. And then afterwards, hopefully you take everything that you built and you start your own business or you start working That's design awesome. full time. Yeah, it's incredible. So you can apply for that online. Um, and we've had a number of creative residents on stream with us on Adobe Live this whole last year. So you might even get the chance to come stream with us on Adobe Live. Cool. So this is good. I'm gonna just bring this down below, below the nav, up there. So that, that's how you play with Auto Animate. You'll see now that it's gonna slide from the bottom. So if I go, wait, okay, if I press play, see? Oh, I saw that. That was kind of buttery. Um, <laughs> it's all about the butter. <laughs> Need that butter. Put more butter on it. <laughs> Thank you for sharing the link, Val. Very nice of you. In 2019, we don't say 
put the logo bigger anymore. Just it's add more butter add more in butter. there. Yeah. It's all about the interactions and the butter. It's nice. Yeah. But what do we say when we want more depth? Um. <laughs> Give me some margarine. <laughs> <laughs> Just say, make it silky. <laughs> That's it. Make it silky. And uh, actually, to fully answer your question, Tan Moy, I don't know when the Adobe residency will be in India, but I know every year the program is expanding a bit as we're able to manage more regions. So um, like currently, uh, if you're in Germany or the UK, you can apply, I believe, and then in the US. And that's hopefully gonna expand as we move forward with the program. So next. Oh, Mike says it's all about the clarified butter. <laughs> the clarified butter, what's that? that? No. That's it. And the only time I've had is like if you're eating like lo lobsters or crab meat or whatever. Yeah. Mike, Mike, let us know. Anyone that has Google, Google at their fingertips. Give us a defini definition for clarified butter. So John is asking a good question. Uh, he's my good friend from Montreal, and mm -hmm. we were just chatting the other day, and, um, and the expression "unpack" has been used a lot. In the, I, I told him like, like what's new yeah, about yeah. San Francisco?" I mean, they use the, the word "unpack" a lot. Like, really? Can you? Unpla unpack or double click into something? Is that when you talk? Huh. Can you add more details in it? I was like, yeah, oh yeah. my God, that's it. <laughs> like, I don't know, like being French, I, I hear always some really new expressions, yeah, yeah. but this one was definitely a uh, San Francisco oh, one. Oh yeah, I believe it. It was funny <laughs> when I was working with Michael this past year, he's from France, yeah. he speaks French. I would use local things like that all the time, or especially <laughs> Ohio things that are nobody says in San Francisco. Yeah. And he would be like, I, I literally don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of one. Maybe like uh, Bahama Mama, do you know that? No. <laughs> it's like a sausage, like a spicy sausage. Okay. And sometimes I just use it to like describe things. And he's like, I don't know what Bahama Mama <laughs> is. <laughs> All right, clarified butter is pure butter fat minus the water and milk proteins found in normal butter, which means it's less likely to burn and spoil. So that's clarified butter. It, it's 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 clarified for me now. Thank you, Heather. You unpacked that for us, and we appreciate it. Uh, Ash is wondering if you prefer light drop shadows, which is subtle, or a medium level drop shadow, which is a bit more impactful. Yeah, it really depends on the butter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just kidding. Is it clarified? Um, <laughs> like uh, lately. I've seen, well, there's always like different trends that are going with drop shadows. I remember the days when I started UI design and we're using like always that, like that paper effect was mm -hmm. so overused, like that little curved shadow. Um, then you could see some really, really subtle ones. Um, I think it, it really depends. Like you use shadow to create depth. Um, so it really depends what you want to do. I think that following uh, material design uh, from Google's design system is always, you know, mm -hmm. like they probably spent so many hours of research on what's the actual like best um, drop shadow. So yeah. I would probably suggest to follow that, fo follow that trend. Um, so th that would be my, my answer for that. Or you could try and set your own trends. Yeah. Just have like Just crazy drop shadows yeah. or or, just, or no drop shadows. <laughs> it's your call. And thanks for clarifying, Tim, um, about the creative residency. You must live full-time in Germany, Japan, Canada, the UK, or the US to apply to the residency currently. Uh, if you want to find out all of the details about the application and if you're eligible or not, you can check out the creative residency website. And you can find that uh, either in chat right now on behance.net slash live, or you can just Google it and it'll come right up. So we're going to make the transition going from one card to another. And basically, is we're going to put ourselves in the shoes of a festival attendee that is just inside a festival and wants to swipe around a different stage and see where they are. So you're going to see this in a second. It's coming to life. It's coming to life. It's like our, it's like our Frankenstein. Yep. We're just feeding it butter. <laughs> Stop this. Hey, Paul. Hey, Welcome what's up, to the Paul? stream. <laughs> hey, you're wearing camo. Claude was wearing camo earlier. I'm stealing your look today because I have the top button. Button. Looks good. Really it's a good look. look. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> you're wondering, Paul Tranny is in the house and will be live yep. in about an hour and what's 26 up, minutes. <laughs> oh, uh, this is a high five off the screen. Oh, oh, oh. 
We got it. We got it. We got it. <laughs> so he'll be live with Caitlin, and they'll be doing motion graphics for this fictional music festival. If you're interested in motion graphics, After Effects, how you you know how companies or anybody creates these really cool animated logos and things, yeah, check she's out really the good. stream. <laughs> yeah, it's insane what she's creating. I literally can't believe that it's she's where she is in two days, so you should stick around for that. So Matthias is traveling right now and his internet connection is very poor. So he's watching this stream at 144p resolution and Matthias. says, I look like Spock. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a, yeah, that's a, that's crazy. That's, you must be a diehard fan yeah. to, to, oh, <laughs> to watch well, he, that. He's, he's your biggest fan. You're his oh, favorite designer. Oh yeah, yeah, Matthias. Yeah. You're his favorite designer. <laughs> Hi, Hassan. Thanks for joining us. Please let us know if you have any questions. Claude is designing a mobile app, specifically an interactive map, um, and prototyping it with Auto Animate and Adobe XD right now. It's a little tricky because that image is always showing in XD, so. Uh... Hey, Matthias, do I look more like Spock? Does Spock do this? Live long and prosper? I'm. I don't really fall I've never really watched the I think that's Spock. Val knows all about Star Trek, so Val will correct me okay. in the chat. She's a huge Star Trek okay. fan. It's crazy. Live long and prosper, Val. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it even works before we spend more time. So that's that's why I like XD. You can jump really quick. So we're gonna do a drag uh, trigger here interaction. So when we're gonna touch mm -hmm. or click and drag. Um, and then it's going to auto animate between those two uh, artboards. That's working. You see? That, that looks so really good. Magic. So we're going to like just. And then we'll do afterwards the reverse interaction. So if you click there, then you can come back. I'm creating a riot in chat right now. So something that you probably don't know, but everybody else does. Um, okay, I'll tell you what Val said. She said, Ignite's lightsaber. Say that one more time. What? She's a huge Star okay. Wars fan. Okay. And we like to give her grief and say that she's a Star Trek fan. <laughs> okay, wow. So I was lying. She loves Star Wars. But I'm sure she knows quite a bit about Star Trek just because, you know, keep your enemy close. And you, <laughs> you know, your friend's close and your enemy's closer, something like that. Lordanis, thanks for joining us from Greece. It's very nice to see you in chat. Please let us know if you have any questions. Nice. Opacity? Yep. So really what Oh, do you know the shortcut for opacity? Go ahead. Click on me. the artboard and just hit one of the numbers. Hit hit like eight. Well this will bring everything down, right? Uh I sorry, just that box. Oh. Like that. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it yeah. Oh it wow. just change it to the percentage. If you could just do five. Guess 50%. what guys? You learn every day. Oh. That's that's that will save me a lot of time. It, yeah, Thank I mean you. think about yeah. it. Yeah. That's perfect. Yep, yep, no problem. You see, now we have, we're gonna start from this screen there. So this is the home screen that we designed yesterday during the festival. You can mm -hmm. have some neat stuff like accessing your ticket. And then oh, you click, so buttery, man. you click on the map, you show the map, all right, it's loading. And then you're just like, you can navigate through it. We're getting Ooh, pretty that's close. So good. <laughs> that's so good. Have you ever done a loading circle with auto animate? It's like, boom, and then it, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know you if can you can use it with a timing. You know animation? that initial time transition, like yeah. while it's loading, like we get to put a little circle in the middle. Yeah. It's like, boom, boom, and then it shoots into it. I, I think I know how to do it, and I'll figure it out. You keep working on what cool. you're working on. I then you I can know. send me the file and put it in. I think I can do this. Eric says, "Pro tip from the bot." <laughs> So one thing that we're going to do in a bit too um, is to show some stuff around. So I'll design the search. When you tap on the search, the actual search could open. Mm -hmm. And also we're going to design. We've been uh, asked a lot about the Find My Friend feature. Because um, at festival, if you if you, loses your, you lose your friend. It's the worst. It's yeah. You're not enjoying your experience. Uh, we've been thinking about features. Um, so nowadays in, in Uber, 
Sometimes there's a lot of people on the street and Uber offers a cool feature. When you wait for them, you can actually show your phone and they mm -hmm. put like an actual color there. Yeah. So as the driver comes in, can recognize, all right, That's he's, cool. the, he's the yellow color. Mm -hmm. Just confirms that for both um, the person that is uh, right. the writer and the driver uh, feel safe about each other. So And I think cool. sometimes they even have like a light in their dashboard, right? It's yeah. the same color. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You can see them coming and you know. Yep, yep. All right. I think I know how to do this. Let's see here. This is all thanks to... All thanks to Howard. Okay, so I can just show you how, how this is done. So essentially what you do is... You add. Do I switch the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll make it full screen. So this is the auto animate UI kit, which is super cool. Howard Pinsky created this. Howard, if you're watching, thank you. I come back to this all the time when I'm trying to navigate the auto animate tool. So what he's put together is just a bunch of UI elements yeah, cool. that are animated. So there's some basics here. So like animating size or position or opacity changes, but also like if you're curious about how to do something like this that's super sweet it's already in there built and all yeah. you need to do is copy and paste it on top you can either copy and paste it or you can just try and reverse engineer and figure out how yeah. it works so you understand the principle and then you apply it yeah so essentially all he did here was he took a portion of a circle and then did 360 degree on yeah. the next one yeah, yeah and then auto animated between the two and xd interpreted the full that's 360 sweet. circle and it just does it that's and really it. cool which is pretty cool. I would highly recommend to to grab those UI kits. Um, you can start, you know, you can mm -hmm. start from that to, to do whatever right. you, you need. Uh, it's always a, a great base. Check this one out. Oh my god! I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't even know. <laughs> that how looks like like some pure like After Effect animations yeah. there. It's really cool. I would not know Fidelity how to do that. So high, yeah. But if you if you play with this kit, you start to learn. Let's some see the Bitcoin thing. one. Yeah, yeah. This is cool. Expanding chart. Ready? Yeah. Wham. Wow, that's cool. It's smooth. Yeah. Butter. Look at that B, it turns. <laughs> the B butter, turns man. into, oh, that's super cool. It's pretty cool. So Good I work, recommend Howard. downloading this. Uh, it's totally free, and you can open it in Adobe XD and start to wrap your mind around some really cool animations you can do with Auto Animate. So we'll go back to your computer. So we're going to do the search expand in. search go down everybody loves that UI kit I'm glad that you have discovered it I wish I could take credit for it but <laughs> Howard is a wizard when it comes to XD so follow him on Behance he publishes new work and new projects all the time that show you how to do cool things in XD uh, he did a parallax effect recently for a website nice. which just looks insane actually let me just, let me just. Yeah, you can you can show it real quick too um, as I work in there. I'm gonna make sure I have the right one open. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna show it real quick. This was designed by Howard Pinsky, and he sent it to me so I could demo what a parallax effect might look like for website design in Adobe XD. So check this out, and he and he has a file for this on oh his behance. Oh my hands. god! I can Doesn't I can look totally so cool. And then he pops it up. These are all time transitions, and and he's only using auto animate. That that is super nice. Right? I think that's amazing. It's crazy cool. So you can do some really cool stuff with Auto Animate once you learn the tool, know how it works. Yeah. You can problem solve and create cool stuff like that. 
Now everyone wants that link, I think. <laughs> yeah. I think that that file is his specifically, but he does have a public file, and it's on his Behance. I'm 99% sure. So one thing we can add in this, when the search expands, we can add the maybe recent searches that they've been looking at. So recent searches. Remind me, when when is the portfolio? Is at 12.30? I should probably remind everybody. Oh. You're right. So we're going to be doing portfolio reviews in 34 minutes. So sometime between now and then, please share your portfolios with us. We ask that it have something to do with UI, UX design, app design, screen design, web design, because this is Claude's Designs area them. of expertise. Um, and we'll go ahead and give it a review. We'll look at a couple of your projects and your portfolio as a whole and give you some feedback. You have 34 minutes to share it with us if you'd like Claude and myself to review it. Um, and then if you work on motion graphics or anything motion related, you can share that portfolio in the next stream with uh, Paul and with Caitlin. Awesome. Slightly too long there. It's always fun to kind of tweak that the times yeah. on the transitions. That's the the yeah. most fun part. And then then you can use also those values when you work with an engineer and they're they're mm -hmm. trying to replicate your prototype. You can share them all of those values. It's it's speaking. They they're using the same values in their code as well. Right. So you can just play with it and then. Just make sure it's matching the same values and the effect should be the same. That's really cool. There's always, in, in XD2, there's a great way to share um, your prototype for um, engineers. So if you type, uh, if you go here top right and you hit the share button, you can share it for development and it's going to create, oh, this one contains no interaction. Oh, okay, so that's my old screen that has nothing in there. I could mm, probably I delete it for now, or no, I'm going to make this the home screen. Yeah. And then share, share for development, create a public link. And I'll show you guys in a bit. It's always really cool to see. Um, it's basically going to dissect your design and create a nice sheet for developers so they can yep. go ahead and, and match all of your values. It's a great, like it's a great reference point for them. Mm -hmm. Make sure you can hand off everything. Yeah like seam seamlessly and takes out the user error of like sending in individual like numbers you know, yeah. or sending a file or pa packaging exactly. it up. You just send a link and they have it. So they have everything there. They can uh, click in and then Boom. if they click on anything, you can see that contextual menu happening on the right. Mm -hmm. So for them, it's really easy to look at your design, make sure it respects all the, the design decisions that you made and they're not like playing the designer role right. and they're actually just clicking everyone everywhere you know it's a really cool tool super useful it helps hand off a lot so anyone wondering <coughs> does xd create something that i can put actually this question was yesterday can i take my design and put it on a website like wix the answer is no, no. but what you can export is design specs so when you're working with a developer they can make sure they get the design right um Let's see here. We've got Sufiane joining in from Morocco. Thanks for joining us. Munir, our good friend, is back in chat. It's nice to see you. Oh, by the way, I have a, a small tool that I showed a lot of people recently. Mm -hmm. It's called Better Snap Tools. You know, on Mac OS, you, there's no really good way to always put your stuff like full screen. Yeah. Um, and that tool, basically, you drag and drop, and then it creates oh. those hot spots on your Mac, and then you release, and then you can resize really quickly, and then you can make your different hot spot zones too. So you can see what? now it's gonna do this. So I need you can, that. It's really good. <laughs> Sometimes when you have like crazy amount yeah. of um, so better snap tool, you can cool. Google that, and it's really a cool tool. That's really useful. Uh, recent searches. I think as designers are really anything where you're working with a large screen, tools like that are super helpful. Yeah. Otherwise, you've got a million tabs open and you're always down screening and up screening. That's what I do sometimes. Hedy from Tunisia, thanks for joining us. Nice to see you. Anyone just joining, just to catch you up to speed very quickly, in 30 minutes, we'll be doing portfolio reviews. So if you have projects that are related to screen design or UX design, 
share that those projects and that portfolio with us using the form on the tab right above chat on behance.net slash live. And in the meantime, Claude's gonna be designing or finishing the design for his interactive map and mobile app for a fictional music festival. Yeah, so if you have questions, work, ask Claude. Feedback's a gift, so you always yep. encourage to, to share your work. Yep. All right, so you can see, I just wanna do this pretty quick. It's not really the folded style that I want. It's mm -hmm. not that bad, but again, this is not made to polish. It's more to, to play around. Um, so on tap, I want to auto animate. Let's we'll see what it does. Oh, hmm. wait. I think it's not. not. Oh, okay, I don't know what that is. Oh, because we need that on the first. Yeah. Is that on the first artboard already? Nope. Oh, let's see. Yes, see. I see, I see. Uh, William, hello. Thanks for joining us from Canada. Claude knows a little about Canada. Yeah. A little I'm from bit. Canada. Which, which city are you from? And if you're saying my t-shirt's beautiful, thank you. That's very kind of you. <laughs> I decided to get kind of bright today to honor David Bowie. So uh, I said this at the beginning, but the fun fact for the week is uh, when we planned this whole, this whole series of streams around a David Bowie inspired music festival, what we didn't realize was on the first day of our streams this week, it was David Bowie's birthday. And today, the last day of our streams this week is actually the anniversary of the day that he passed away. So this entire week has sort of been like a David Bowie tribute. Yeah. Just celebrating his life and the way that he was able to inspire music and culture and fashion and design. Zakaria from Bangladesh, thanks for joining us and thanks for saying hi. This will show, and then we're gonna show the text after nice. time animation. Delay of point two. And Daniel, we will likely do more weeks like this in the future. We have a lot of fun planning them because we get to create fictional design brief, come up with a theme, and then we have designers working on it from multiple angles. Typically, though, like you'll see next week, we'll focus on one subject type for the duration of the week. And that'll be like that the next several weeks at least. So next week, our streams are focusing on specifically UI and UX design in Adobe XD. So we'll have three designers creating um, apps that are either fictional, like personal projects, but also working on some projects for real life clients. And they'll be creating them live on stream, showing you their process and how they tackle some design problems. I wanna try to add a blur beat. So as I tap, maybe I can have a blur effect there going. Uh, so background blur this. Maybe I might just not do the blur for now. Or you can do it. I believe yeah, you can. I believe yeah, in you, Claude. I can do anything. Add some butter. <laughs> You're right, Ashi. His spirit is helping us organize from the beyond. I said earlier that uh, on January 10th, it was the day that the world lost a bright star in David Bowie. We're hoping to keep his legacy and memory alive with things like the Are You Out There Music Festival. <laughs> we can bring our red shoes and just dance. Right. Thing. I'm, I'm just thinking about the voice interaction right now, so I'm just too excited to, to do it. You're geeking out. All right. We'll have about, we have about 25 minutes to continue working on whatever component of the interactive map you want to work on. And the portfolio reviews, 25 minutes. Okay. And then in the portfolio reviews will take roughly 20 minutes. Okay. And then we'll have time at the end to basically wrap up and tell everyone what we worked on this week. Cool. So whenever you think you need to, if you want to get the voice commands, probably yeah, sometime might do soon. it soon. Because we got we get the overall idea of the map there. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I did really is let's take a look at again, like kind of where you're at, like what you've done so far. Total. It's just on the map. Okay, like, on the map. See, like where we're going. So yeah, what I, I was trying to do is that 
first we decided to do that map because it was asked a lot and we we discovered that this would be a feature uh, that would be great for a music festival app so a great way as ux designers is to really know your audience and ask them question and and go do some research there um and then so you click on the map there is that your friends you in chat <laughs> who claude you took my app idea chief <laughs> no guillaume Guillaume, how do you say that? Guillaume. Guillaume. No, it's a French name, Guillaume? but I, you took my app idea. I don't know. <laughs> there's there's a lot of festival app out there, so <laughs> maybe you just are on the same wavelength. So you can see Sorry, that. Give me an interrupt. Oh no, it's all good. You can see that. Uh, so th what I wanted to do is to show a creative way to use the nice. um, auto animate feature. So you can see that there's a zooming and mm -hmm. also moving effect in there, uh, and then. Another type of interaction, which is on drag, mm -hmm. you can move move around the app. Nice. So we can show it also uh, on the GoPro would be kind of cool. Let's do it. Let me grab it real quick. So just show that it's instant on your phone. And Set it up we're going to get here. a good. And then we will, well, whenever you're ready. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. So uh, Adobe XD has a mobile oh, app that oh. you can download from the App Store Boom. and basically uh, allows you to work in real time with your app. So as you design or so right now, let's say I design and I want to make sure that the type sizes are now all correct. And you can see that it's really, really instant when I move anything on my artboard, artboards that I can preview it on the device that I'm actually designing for. Mm -hmm. um, so I highly recommend doing this and adding this to your design process. Um, it just makes it really nice. And then what you can do next is to play around also with the different interactions and, and see how it feels on your, on your phone and see if the tapping uh, areas are good. Does, do they fit well with your thumb? Uh, so if I tap in on the map, I see that the map loads and then I can go ahead and move around and go from um, from from a location to another. So that's pretty pretty neat pretty overall. Pretty sick. Like so butter, this, man. This is broken a bit. It's the word and of then the day. if I tap, oh, the search will work too. It's a little buggy right now. There's some stuff I want to focus on. Sweet. Uh, but I'm gonna try to power through, and we're gonna do now the voice. Uh, nice. The voice feature. Sounds good. So one feature that we asked around was to find if what happened if you lose your friend. Uh, so we have that. Um, cool microphone at the top right there um, and we're gonna do just experiment and do something pretty fun with it uh, so here I had some comments about my masterful GoPro usage I mean I'm up I mean if you want me to oh. <laughs> you know film some things I've got a GoPro a I'll pro. film it for you <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the UI components for the voice so when I'm gonna tap on the actual microphone, it's going to trigger the iOS mm -hmm. uh, UI for the voice here. So Adobe XD uh, provides you with all of the um, all the thing you need there in the UI kits. Yep. File, so get you UI kits. Apple, you can go there and then you download Adobe XD. Look at that. I think it's a few times that I've been downloading <laughs> it now, but uh, just to show you where it is. And then if you go into the UI kits there, you can open the iPhone X, and then once you open the iPhone X, then you can go ahead and, and shop for some UI in nice. there. Uh, so what I actually want is that microphone. So we're gonna go ahead and grab this, grab that symbol here, uh, bring it into our uh, UI here. So on click, it's gonna trigger uh, the voice coming. Uh, oops. Okay, yeah, we got it. And then... Oh. Why is it making a copy? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> that, that map is really confusing XD, I think. Yeah, maybe. I'm just it's gonna a, move a... it away a bit more. Yeah, that's good. Oh, did I copy two things? I really want to get to that. Mm -hmm. um, we'll get it. We'll get it. Munir says, I will definitely watch all of the replays this week. 
It's very nice of you, and I yeah, hope you, you get a lot out of them. Uh, if you're watching and you're wondering what that means, every single stream that we do is archived permanently on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel in a, in a playlist, and you also can find it on behance.net slash live. There's a tab right above the player that says replays, and if you click on it, you can actually filter out content types. So if you want, want to see replays for graphic design, click on graphic design. If you want to see replays for UI UX design, click on that. And it can be a cool way to watch the shows even if you're unable to watch them while they're live. I will for sure not watch my own uh, stream. You never do that. Yeah, I can't it's do it. <laughs> yeah. Like hearing your own voice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's double wham. You hear your own voice, you see your awkward, your <laughs> awkward body movements, and you, you tell yourself, I said butter too many times. <laughs> It just isn't healthy. So I just leave that. I leave that alone. Actually, if I play it, but I want a blurry version of the map. And Zakaria, I believe that's something they're working on, the live preview from Windows. Um, and if you have questions about where they're at with that, you might be able to find the thread on user voice for Adobe XD. Val says, watching my own live streams makes me feel super lame, lol, <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> like, even if you're doing the coolest oh, thing. Yeah. Like, we just What an annoying yeah. voice, what a stupid accent. <laughs> like, it's so bad. We just, I don't know why we do that to ourselves, but we just <laughs> hyperanalyze and we like, chew ourselves apart for no reason. Coordinates. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna hey D, thanks for joining us. It's great to see you as always. Claude's adding a voice command uh, experience to find our friends within the interactive map of this mobile app right now. Okay, so <laughs> how are we gonna do this? Yeah, we're gonna trigger this this first animation. It's it's really not polished, but it's to get the concept out. Yeah, we're triggering this. This is moving in the background and it's annoying me. And then this there. Nice. Okay. So now what we want to do is to create another artboard. We want to move from this artboard to the mm -hmm. other one. So we're going to prototype with voice. <clears throat> so XD um, at last max uh, introduced a voice trigger animation. So you can see that uh, one of the big trend in 2019 is that people will design for voice command way more. We want less UI in our world. Sometimes it's really easier with all the Google homes and, yep. and all the devices that uses uh, voice and they're nowadays. And so cheap. It's, yeah, so cheap. Like, we need oh. to, you know, design for voice better. Yep. Um, so it's a new type of, uh, of design expertise that you can develop. Mm -hmm. If I would start design right now, I would probably focus on voice design. You got to skate where the puck is going to yeah. be, right? right. So, um, so on If you didn't click, catch that, that was a hockey reference. <laughs> Claude is so from on Canada. click, we're going to have a speech back. And it's going to say, hey there. Oh, what were we going to say? Ground control to Major Tom? So we need to trigger, to oh, trigger right. the boys. Ground control to Major Tom. And then, and then Bowie says back to us, how can, how can I help you? Okay, so... Is that what we're going to do? Oh, yeah, let's do that. Um, we're gonna... We can't put David Bowie's voice in the prototype, but we'll pretend. We have imaginations, and they work. So, okay. Let's do that. And then the trigger is voice. So, ground control... To Major Tom. To Major Tom? Uh, Tom, T-O-M. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That'd be funny though. Major Tom. thumb. <laughs> T O N. Yep. There we go. Okay. Yep. Yep. And then what it's gonna do is get it's gonna do a speech play. Um, yeah, it's gonna reply you something. So it's gonna mm -hmm. the machine's gonna answer you, 
And what we what do we want uh, them to say back? Uh, just just uh, how can I help yeah, you? Yeah, how can I help you? Yep. So how can What's up, dude? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, how did you write that? Let's do sub dude. S yeah, what's up, dude? How can I help you? <laughs> Hi, Dorina. Thanks for joining us. It's great okay. to see you as always. So let's see. So the way to do that when you, if you're, you're trying this right now in XD and you're doing your for, uh, first voice interaction, you have a, also a reminder here, you got to hold down the space bar yep. and then talk in it. I'm going to make you talk okay. in it because I don't want, I don't want to do that. You don't want to say ground control. Oh, wait, it's going to access oh, my right, microphone. Right, right. Okay. Ground control to Major Tom. Okay, I can't sing it. I'll do it oh, normal. I don't have. I'll do it. Any... Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, okay. The I'm sound was it on. Ground control to Major Tom. Subdued. How can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna say, find my friends. Yeah. Or so something. we're gonna add another interaction here. <laughs> um, someone got a kick out of Major Thumb. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, yeah, we gotta find my friend and then add, we're gonna add in, okay. I need to be a little more structured because it's find my friend. Yeah, we, so we this got is this. this uh, I'm just gonna give everyone a quick reminder too. You have 13 minutes to share those portfolios with us. We would love to give you a review. Just make sure that in your portfolio you have some work that's around screen design and UX design so that Claude can flex some of his expertise while giving you feedback. Oh yeah, everyone loves Major Thumb. <laughs> Maybe we should just do Major Thumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the mascot for the festival. <laughs> it's just okay. a giant thumb running around. <laughs> <laughs> so then we're gonna, yeah, at the end we're gonna add the different friends there. So. Okay, so that's gonna be our end screen and we're gonna do like a zoom out because they're all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna add in some, all right. So we're gonna add in some circles there to create our avatars, so 4D. So we're gonna have, I, I grabbed your pictures this morning. Oh, nice. So, spark. Assets. Find my, my friends. friends. All right, so we're gonna have Gus in there. Sweet. And then we're gonna have Paul in there. And then we're gonna have Paco in there. This is the best festival <laughs> crew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we're gonna go all work out afterwards. <laughs> so, all right, so we're gonna say that Paco is near the campground. Nice. He's chilling. He's, he's a, he's a yeah, camper that's, outdoor. That's Paco know, vibes. That's full Paco. Yep. Gus uh, will be having. Oh boy. Uh, well, he's at the Stardust Room. Yeah, that sounds right. He's living, living his life. Living my best life. And then Paul's for sure at the <laughs> cocktail bar. <laughs> with me, probably. I'm gonna add my own yeah, dot you, there. You in there. <laughs> <laughs> a little blue dot to indicate me. Nice. Right. So, okay, we have that final state. So here, we're gonna go ahead and say, the voice command will be fine, my, or I'm lost. Or just help me. <laughs> help me, help me Bowie. Help, help me. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> so. Let's just see if it's gonna work here. Um, should work. Transition. Can we, okay. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna start it again. Yep. It only responds to my voice, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ground control to Major Tom. Sup, dude? How can I help you? <laughs> help me, Bowie. No. Oh no. I'm, okay, wait. <laughs> uh, 
you're right, Jan. We do need Jason Levine for some of the singing yeah. and voice acting. So this is taking you. I think it would be cool if they added more different voices for playback at some point to XD. Oh yeah, some custom voice. Or maybe like a plugin could, I don't know if a plugin can manipulate that, but it could just have some different voice files. It didn't work. Uh, so, dude. Okay. <laughs> Is it not connecting? And then here, we want, help me. Help me, Bowie. Bowie, but it actually needs to go on that screen. So if you would just try there. Okay. Help me, Bowie. Yeah, it probably doesn't work because it only works Help with me, my voice. It only works with my voice. <laughs> See, it worked. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> okay, so I think we have it. We're just going to do something here. Yes, Morgan Freeman's voice is real nice. He talks slow and breaks it apart a little bit. Okay. All right, give it a shot. Uh, ground control to Major Tom. Subdued, how I can help you? <laughs> help me, Bowie. Ah. Was that not the right prompt? Help me, Bowie. No. Oh, Come wait. on, baby. We got this. We got this. We're going to have it. Yep. I agree, Beck. Star Wars voiceover plugins for XD would be epic. Samuel L. Jackson, Morgan Freeman. See, this is what I'm talking about. Someone figure out how to create a plugin and put it on there. I think I'm understanding what's going on because he needs to. So right now, uh, the actual mm -hmm. speech playback, it, the only action that it's doing oh, is that it's replying to you, but there's yep. no way that it's going to that second artboard, right? See. Can we do... Well, we can just do... Uh, how can we do that? I think we can just do one. There's a way to do it, I know for sure, but I'm speech playback. I'm not an expert. Because <laughs> um, you can't add two interactions on one, one art board yet. But well, we're I gonna would think that the voice playback shouldn't be. Sh I don't know why it would take up the interaction spot. You know, like why does that count as an interaction? Yeah, because it's like a, it's a response. But I've seen, I know this works. I just okay. I'm lost. Well, so let's just do the second part. We'll yeah, just, let's just do. Um, help me, Bowie. Here. Yeah. So, on voice, help me, Bowie. Mm -hmm. Please help me, Bowie. Pretty please. Help me, Bowie, and then the transition. Nice. We'll go there. Yeah, yeah, let's so, try that. Please help me, Bowie. And oh. then you can see your friend running around the festival and having a blast. Paul's going nuts, <laughs> running in circles around the cocktail bar. But yeah, this is a feature that was asked. Um, so, you yeah. know, you can maybe we can we could think about like tapping on the actual user, mm -hmm. and you could probably trigger a chat. You know, yep. talking like, "Hey, I'm at." I'm at the cocktail bar with, with Paul. You should join after that specific show. Right. Um, so really a cool feature that would be nice to have um, inside of a music festival app. I would, yeah, I would really like that. Like I think someone mentioned yesterday when they crowd surf, they got separated from yeah. their friends. Yeah. And then yeah, you're yeah. stuck for like a couple hours and you don't know where your buddy is. That's in the, like, yeah, the initial story we yeah, had yeah. here. Yeah. It was like first body surfing yeah, exactly. experience. I'm like, you know, living my best life, and then, whoops, oh, no. just lost my friends. So oh, no. uh, that can be a, a really bad experience. Oh. 
G2's got it. You select a different layer within that artboard and give it a trigger yeah. to connect to the next artboard instead of connecting the artboard as a whole. But with a time animation probably, right? Mm, yeah. Mm. How much time do we have? We have about, we have less than five minutes. So that's a good time for us, for me to remind everybody watching, you have less than five minutes to share your portfolios with us. To share it, all you need to do is click on the tab right above chat on behance.net slash live. On it, you'll see portfolio review, and there's a form that's linked there. It's a Google form, you fill it out, you put your portfolio link in there, and you'll have a chance to receive a review. We'll review two portfolios in four minutes within the next four minutes. We'll review each one for about 10 minutes. So what is here? Can you please help me bury the transition speech? Cool though, these are like those aha moments where we yeah. get to figure out something live Same. on stream. And Same. actually our viewer here, I think G2 was the one that helped us figure it out. So thanks for sharing with us. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> we're not sure yet, but I think it's gonna, I, th I think it's gonna work. <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tap, I'm gonna tap on it. So we'll see. You got it. Um, all right, so let's give it a last try. So are you gonna do the Ground control? Yeah. Ground control to Major Tom. Sup, dude, can I help you? Please help me, Bowie. Is that it? Yeah, Bowie, why is it not doing the transition? Hmm. Oh, well. Please, please uh, write me on uh, we'll on, on Twitter to, to, to help me out with that. I don't yep. want to do another internet you, fail like, you like can, right now. <laughs> you can find Claude uh, at, at Picho pretty much yep. anywhere. Uh, the link will be in chat on Behance, I'm sure, here momentarily. Cool. Should we do a quick recap of everything we did? Yeah. Right yeah. Now? Maybe we can recap what we've done today. Okay. Uh, then yep. we'll do the portfolio reviews and then show them everything we did this week. Perfect. So today we, uh, based on those sketches that I've uh, created bef uh, before the, the stream, uh, we really wanted to experiment with the, um, the auto animate feature and the on drag animation to create a cool map. Uh, interactive map that would allow the different uh, festival attendees to uh, walk around and explore the the the, the site. Mm -hmm. So we were also talking earlier uh, in the stream about having a possible like scavenger hunt. Maybe that can be added uh, later on. But basically, what I did is that from that home screen, um, from that home screen, we have that uh, trigger to. Uh, that button to trigger the map. So on click on the map, you can see the map coming in. Mm -hmm. And then we have a first interaction that just shows kind of like the entrance of the map. And it could also mm -hmm. be that, that loading part, just like to not have like a white loading. You just like show an actual image of yeah. where you probably left off. Mm -hmm. And then this animation has, um, this artboard has an interaction based on a time trigger. Yep. And then after that, so on the time trigger, it's doing an auto animate and it's also shifting the image in the background and pulling up those cards. So you can mm -hmm. see that those cards are actually on that artboard and it, that's how you're gonna create that fade up animation. If you're not putting it into the first artboard, then it's not gonna do it. Right. Um, and then the actual, the, the last part of this interaction is around uh, doing the drag. So on tap, you see it loads, and then it, I'm always placing the, the actual center in the icon of the actual card there, mm -hmm. so you can really visually relate. We could pr probably experiment having like, maybe only this icon would be in color, the rest would be a little fade out, just to bring that extra amount of focus. Mm -hmm. um, and then on uh, tap and drag or click and drag, you can see that it's gonna shift around the, the map, and then you nice. see the rebel stage. Um, and then we finally um, gave our best shot at doing a voice interaction with uh, to to find your friends. <laughs> so, which I think we did pretty good at. But there's yeah. some polishing to do. There's, there's some stuff we can add there. 
Yeah. And I think it was more user error than application error. We were just trying to troubleshoot it. Yeah. Perfect. But we, we did talk to Bowie very briefly from the great beyond. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, he replied. Yeah, pretty, pretty well, he wants, too. He wants to help us. Yeah, he's ready to help, and he shows us where our friends are. <laughs> you can't tell us otherwise. <laughs> so if you see that down in the corner right now, I think it's over here somewhere. Portfolio, portfolio <laughs> submission deadline has now passed. If you have not shared your portfolio with us, that is okay. You can share it again in the next stream with Paul and with Caitlin. But Claude and I are going to head to the portfolio review space station where we'll then review two amazing portfolios. Yeah. We'll be right back. down. It's not safe. Airlock confirmed. <laughs> Hello everybody. Welcome back <laughs> to Adobe Live. We're going to take our helmets off. This clothes is broken. <laughs> he has foam on his forehead. I have a really big head. so <laughs> We have a lot of hair too. All right. But we're here in the portfolio review space station and we're going to review two amazing portfolios shared by viewers with us today. Nice. So first of all, thank you for sharing your work with us. I think it takes a lot of courage to put your work out there and um, I'm proud of you. So yeah, it's also a really, really important part of uh, growing as a designer and growing as a professional, uh, putting that work in front of people that you admire, people that you think will give you great feedback. Mm -hmm. um, I've received some really good feedback in my career, also received some really bad feedback and some non-constructive non feedback. Mm -hmm. I would also suggest you to, when you ask feedback for people, like be really intentional at what, about what type of feedback you're looking yep. for. Um, and also give it, give it, give a context. Right. Give a lot of context to your work because that way that person can give you guided feedback. Mm -hmm. um, context is really, really important. It's like, for example, if you go see, um, and actually my, my ex-boss, uh, Jessica Moon, oh, yeah. uh, did a good talk around that, around context is king, yep. is that um, she was sharing that um, she was going to see um, classical music all the time when she was young. And, and a lot of people were, were hating on classical music. And then uh, one, t one time she uh, had someone before the show explaining what they're about to to see yeah. or what they're about to hear and just having that extra mm -hmm. level of context it allows people to just like put yourself in the shoe and just really um, um, understand correctly so I think um, that especially applies to things like music and artwork and design 100%. because without context people are very lost exactly like have you been to an art museum and you see a piece of artwork that doesn't have a description yeah. by it and it's maybe just like a couple colors. <laughs> and you're like, well, that's cool, I guess. But if there's a description and you know what they were trying to execute, what 100%. the background is, maybe it's amazing then. So, yep, yep. Yeah. So I think, yeah, we're probably, we'll probably have some insights like that to share with these portfolios. Our first one up was shared to us by G2 Rot, a UI UX designer from nice. Mumbai, India. Oh, cool. So thanks for sharing your work with us. I'll just scroll down a little bit real quick, see if there's a bio. Always open for new opportunities. I like that you opened with this because if you're looking for opportunities, it's clear. Put it out there. Yep. Looking for opportunities, looking for a full time job, available for freelance work as well. And then you have right underneath that some information about your experience. If you want your work to be done to the best quality, please contact me. Yeah, I like that. So I think and it's. And faces good. on quality is really good. Mm -hmm. And I think your uh, layout from what I'm seeing so far is pretty good. And something that I re really like especially are these cover pages up here. Yep. They seem like the inviting cabinet, and they're, they're consistent yep. and I want to click on them. I think as we scroll down a little bit, maybe this is older work of yours. Yeah. It changes uh, yeah. a little. So something you might want to do is curate a bit and pull to the top only the ones you want people to see first. Yeah. Maybe remove some projects that you feel like don't really I need to do that. Do. <laughs> I need to do that on my Behance as well. But um, at the same time, it shows how yeah. he has evolved through his journey too. But mm -hmm. yeah, um, sometimes when you, you put like less is more, if you, if you have like just show your like top four or five, it's always 
a good amount. Yeah, and maybe, you know, maybe you have everything on Behance and it all lives here and that's totally cool. But if you decide to uh, have a, like if you have, yeah, I see you have a dribble up here, if you have a personal website, you could just select like a handful of things that you really like and want to work on and then you're off to a good start there. Yep. So let's jump into any of these. First Looks one, like auto animate. G2's though. done some daily creative challenges. Awesome. Onboard for e-commerce. Do you want to check this one out? Let's do it. All right. Wow, that's cool. Nice. E-commerce onboarding. Okay. So it seems like it's a shopping, a shopping prototype. Nice. So something shopping that onboarding. I see initially might be cool is you have the black dot here. <laughs> and it matches where you're at on the screens. I'm mm -hmm. assuming this is supposed to be like a swipe. And down here, if this was number two, and this was number two, there'd be some visual consistency here as yeah. I'm scrolling down. Yeah. And I'm starting to build yeah. it in my head. Because right here we're back to one, but we're on artboard two. Yep. And I would have probably done like one, two, three, not one, yeah. three, two. So such a small detail. It's very, it's very yeah. minor, but it's for some reason for me it was one of the first things I noticed. Uh, yeah. So. Um, I like, I like uh, that onboarding. Awesome. It's, um, those onboarding needs to be, uh, really, really clear, short sentences. Mm -hmm. Um, I like that you can already feel the brand, uh, in there using the different letters. Yep. Uh, good consistency around the different photos that are like, it's a, it's a cool mi mix of like real photography, kind of like playful background and also gradients in there. So. Overall, you can first you can think and like, oh my god, this seems like a, a lot of different styles mm -hmm. all mixed together. But in that case here, it works really nicely. Yep. Uh, good depth uh, in there as well, so it's pretty really cool. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that they're not overcrowded either. Like they're easy to look at. Yep. Um, you can skip you type, the whole great. onboarding. This is always really important. Yep. Um, if you want to go ahead and jump straight into the into an app, yep. so. It's really strong. I also like that you used real copy instead of like lower Mipsum. Yep. Because it makes it feel like a, a more real experience. Something that might be nice and you might have it, uh, you don't have it in here, uh, would would be context like we talked about. Yeah. So maybe at the top it could say why you designed this, who you designed it for, what components you worked on. Um, that way as I'm scrolling through, I'm thinking, okay, cool. So this is the onboarding experience. Uh, and then I keep scrolling down and I, I see, okay, this is more onboarding yep. experience. Uh, maybe there's a clickable prototype in here. You designed it in XD. I can actually play with the app. Yeah, I think I think you're you're hitting on a really good point. And I especially if you're you're looking to it for a job, and every time that you're gonna interview, yes, the final pixels are great. It's visual. Uh, uh, an image is telling mm -hmm. like it's a thousand words, you know. Right. But um, like like write down your research. I know as designers, we we love to just play and play mm -hmm. with some UI. But you gotta write down your process. It's really, really important. Every interviewer are gonna are gonna focus on like how actually you got to the final pixels yeah. way more yeah. than just seeing the final picture. It's like really important. A, lo a lot of designers, I think, especially in-house designers, are hired for their process. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's what they're hired for. Yeah. And so if you can demonstrate that in your portfolio and in your projects, it's a huge leg up on anybody else who has projects and is competing for the same jobs. Yeah. Especially since you've already indicated that you're looking for work. So that might be a good tip for you to apply mm -hmm. to this project. Otherwise, I think the designs are really nice. Yeah, it's super nice. Visually super looks really fresh. Yep. Okay, cool. So we'll do one more. Um, you, you, you pick, pick one. I pick. Yeah. Yep. Um, There's digital currency trading platform. I like, got. Let's go with that yep. one. Yeah. Okay, cool. You got some, some, some good views too. It's yeah, nice. I, and I forgot to, let me appreciate the last one too. Oh yeah. Go. All right, now we got gotcha. you. Okay, so this is a digital currency trading platform, specifically the landing page. You see, just like just having this yeah. right away, like uh, one sentence of what the, the the project is, it's it's giving me some some level of context versus the other one that had like basically no title. It had it had the onboarding portion, mm -hmm. but um, now I'm I know what's what is it about? Yep. Made with XD, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You can show that you're you're an expert in XD in that oh, way. I love this too. That's cool. Yeah, you can show that you you know everything is going to be consistent. Um, it's really well defined. I'm interested about the colors a bit. I think what you've done is you've taken the color and then you've made a halo around it with the same color. 
Oh, yeah. But to me, like, it's tricking my eye a little bit. Like, this looks kind of blue to me for some reason because there's a drop shadow something behind the color. Yeah. So it's making it hard for me to know what that color is exactly. Yeah. So it might be nice just to leave just the just straight color. leave it flat. I know it's shadows are important, uh, like, are trendy and... As designers, sometimes we just want to like apply everything everywhere. Mm -hmm. But the actual intent there is to show the exact color. And if you have a like just a problem or like yeah. you know you get caught up in that, we might just like want to leave it cleaner. Mm -hmm. um, one thing with the fonts uh, yeah. right above, it would have been nice to uh, show the different pairing, like your H1, H2 uh, paragraph styles, cool. uh, more than just showing all of the alphabet in there. I don't. I don't see how this would be 100% uh, valuable. Mm -hmm. um, so sh show the font uh, sizes, the font pairing too would be really cool to yeah, see. Yeah, that's a good tip. I think this looks nice, but it's yeah. not super useful. Right? Yeah, visually yeah. it's it's beautiful. And yeah. Montserrat is one of, of my favorite font. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it's just a tip there. I also really like how the hexadecimal code for this is A B A B A B. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Oh, cool. Uh, all right, yeah. so we got an animation down here. This is neat. Nice. Let's put it big. Cool. So this looks like um, that's big as I can get it. I can zoom in. So one quick tip there. I love it. I love the animation. I love the effect of zooming in. Uh, I love the effect of motion there. Mm -hmm. I would probably in your GIF try to leave that like that last moment of that GIF more than like check, like. Yeah. Three to five seconds, so that I I don't uh, get get frustrated by the reload yeah. all the time. I want to focus on what's the end state, so I would probably leave that little that moment, moment at the yeah. end uh, slightly longer, and it's gonna make it even even cooler. Yeah, if it was just as long as that initial pause, like this, boom. Yeah, and then it comes back, and then goes it's back to the initial pause, and that's yeah. it. It'd be perfect. Yeah, but good work. I like yep. the illustration style. It's really fun. Isometric, uh, it's a really good trend right now. Mm -hmm. So um, the use colors. of color is super fresh. It's really approachable. Um, stuff like digital currency are scaring everyone. Yeah. And it's it's fairly something pretty complex. And I've seen a lot of people trying to, like by using that style of like really approachable style um, overall makes it makes makes you want to learn more about it. Mm -hmm. um, so good, good work on that. Yep, I totally agree. I think to me this reads like a currency or financial experience right away, just based off the colors. Yeah. Uh, it kind of feels a little to me like Robin Hood a little bit. Yeah. In terms of the design, so. Free to try. That's good. That's cool. CTAs are good there. Icon, but also your graphics are pretty pretty nice. They're matching all, all across too. You're using kind of that same base. Mm -hmm. and, and if it, you, uh, G2, if you are in chat right now, I'd like to know if you made, if you illustrated these, like if you created the icons. Yeah. And that might be nice for context too, uh, to let us know, did, did you create this whole project? Did you use some tools to grab your icons? Because if I were looking to maybe hire you as a UI UX designer, and you and I know also you have illustration skills, yep. icon skills, yeah. some other things Make beyond clear. that. Yeah. That's a huge bonus of value. Yeah. So one thing, one piece of feedback on that, I, uh, if you go slightly up, so here the illustration again uh, next to the fifty percent yep. is more in that uh, editorial style, like more like slack looking. And if you zoom all the, uh, if you scroll all the way up, it's slightly more like isometric. The first one at the top. Yeah. So I would. Try to be consistent with those style. Right now that you see that it's at an angle and isometric, and if you scroll all the way down, it's more flat. So mm -hmm. be consistent with those two style, and I think you're you're gonna hit something pretty strong there. That I think it indicates to me though that maybe maybe G two didn't create all these illustrations, rather aggregated them. Yeah. Because it looks to me like different illustrators created created yeah. these. That's just my opinion. It's a, yeah, it's a style. Yeah. It, the style, style is different there. Yep. I think it would be okay if the illustration, like the isometric aspect is um, on those big illustrations, but not on the small ones, on the mm -hmm. actual more like icon slash graphic. Yep. Um, this is okay, but these two needs needs to match a bit more. Cool. So G2 said that uh, he or awesome. she did, Ma he, yeah. he did uh, make it. So that's awesome. That's Really good. I think that's a great tip uh, when you, since you are, you have full power and control over these illustrations, try to make sure they're consistent within one project. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's it's good work. I think it's really nice. It's nice that how uh, you've included a download, download nice. which is cool. Like I could I could download it and play with it. Um, I, w I feel the same way about this as the last one. I would love to see an embedded prototype. You yeah. can do that with XD. You can copy the code yep. and just put it in BNs. Yep. And then I and then I could not only scroll through the design, but I could click through it and see what my experience is like with it. Mm -hmm. um, because if you're trying to get design work for both user experience and user interface, that's a good way to demonstrate both for someone that's trying to get yep. a feel. The logo is fun too. Yep. Um, I like the the H1 around the trade faster and trade smarter. It's mm -hmm. really clever. Um, good work. Yeah. It's really G2. nice. Awesome job. I'm gonna give you a. Nice round of applause. Good job. Thanks for inviting our feedback, and we hope it was helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll move on to our next design right designer right now, who is Tenmoy Saha. Tenmoy Saha, thanks for sharing your work with us. I hope I'm getting your name correct. Um, I think that should be close. He's an illustrator and designer. Nice. Art Society Zero um, from Kolkata, India. Cool. Right. Got a good oh, amount of views there. Same, uh, same amount of experience. Okay. Three plus good. year experience in the field of designing and illustrations. Uh, worked a lot with clients, freelance projects, branding, advanced knowledge of Photoshop. So it's cool you put in here a little bit about the programs that you're yeah. comfortable with. It's always good to know from a recruiter standpoint. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're, they're looking for specific skills. Um, oh, I would suggest with this uh, resume portion, it might be nice to for format it a little bit. Like yeah. uh, you got to hang in comma mark and you need a space here. And there's like a couple mi very minor things, but if you're able to go in there, edit it, make sure that it, you're, you're breaking up your different paragraphs depending on the content type and you're finishing your sentences like correctly with punctuation, it'll come off like a lot more professional because that's what a resume is. It's supposed to be your first sort yep. of impression that you're creating on someone. So. Yep. Other than that, I think that uh, it reads well and it kind of tells us what we need to know. And then so I think the layout. Yeah, the thumbnail cool. works really great. I think I, I see the same project twice, it looks like. Limbo, yeah. video, and concept art, and concept art. Maybe uh, there you could just I would combine switch it. Yeah. And, and just make it one project. Or put a, put a play icon on the on the video one or something like that. Yeah, yeah it's just, just something to make it a little different if they're completely disconnected. Mm -hmm. But like you said, if it's part of the same project, yeah. I'd add it in the same section. We can see real quick. So it looks like oh, that's cool work. concept art, and there's a video in here, and then okay. I just want to see real quick if it's the same. So it looks like it's the same, but just without the video. Yeah. I would so I would say you probably just don't even need this project. Combine those two. Yeah. And then that way, even collectively, you would have more views on one project. You would get more eyes on it. It's more to share, more easy to share for people yeah. that are viewing it. And then again, I would probably add a lot of context. Who was the client? Yeah. Was this fictive, fictive work or not? What was your main challenge mm -hmm. uh, in that project? So I would probably add, add more information there. I think the illustration itself is beautiful. It's really nice. Yeah. I, I love the depth here. I love the gradient and colors. Yeah. This is one of my it's favorite mysterious. colors, so yeah. I'm, I'm into it. Yeah. I like the glowing eyeballs, and I want to watch the video. Cool. See some... Some, like, fireflies. Yeah. Art Society Zero. Cool. So, yeah, I can, cool. tell, I can tell you used After Effects in Photoshop here, and I think it looks really cool. But I'm with Claude. I would love to see some more context. Yeah. We're going to have her... Uh, after effect, after effect specialists in a in a bit, right? Yeah, yeah. Caitlin. Stick around. Caitlin is making an insanely cool yeah. motion graphics <laughs> for uh, the for the festival. So if you yeah. want to see that happen, maybe she can give you some cool pro tips. Stick around. All right, let's check this UI UX design for Into the Spider Verse. <laughs> nice. Ooh, Caitlin saw this recently, right? My good insight. She said she loved it. <laughs> I need to see it. Do you like that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk, we'll Let's do it. We'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, we have, uh, at least here we have some context, which is nice. The illustrations and layouts were made using Adobe Photoshop. Individual illustrations are included in this project. Okay, cool. So we know that you created the illustrations, which is nice. Some good work there. So it looks like we've used, this is just kind of like two different versions maybe? Yeah. Because it's the same. To the Spider-Verse, different colors, type. showing variants to your client yep. is always great. Um, sometimes, especially in, in visual design, you you might present 
something to your client and they, for example, hate the color purple, yep. it's always have it's always good to have a variants of your design and, and have something in your back back mm -hmm. pockets. Um, and also, yes, you can show a lot of different versions, but you as the designer too, you gotta you gotta sell the one you think uh, will will work the best with the, your client. But yeah, yeah, I like the the good attention on. Yeah going closer or oh, even the sketches this there that's that's some fun stuff i, I would probably go ahead start sorry. with it yeah start with yeah. it and then you can it's it's kind of like building off yeah exactly i think your colors though and your illustrations are insanely good so it's awesome and um tenmoy just mentioned uh he made a project related to adobe he would like us to view and we're running out of time quickly so i'm gonna actually switch to that one okay adobe world yeah but but okay, yeah. cool yeah that that first one yeah. that's uh, only side note, like start by that sketch, then illustration, then illustration in the marketing site. So then yeah. as the user scroll, they see all it all built together. Exactly. Yeah. Give, so, give some chronology, good work. like make it, work. make it make sense with the timeline. Yep. Uh, and this is awesome too. I, something I'm noticing just right away is you, you're a really strong illustrator. Mm -hmm. It seems like you have a lot of skill in that category and it might be nice for you to really focus on like I think you say you're a designer and, you, and this is UI UX design web design and illustration um, you could break out some of these skill sets into their own individual projects like just illustration could be yeah. nice like but, that yeah. Adobe world that cool wintry yep. looking illustration welcome to the world of Adobe where we stay creative every day our goal is to influence the world in a positive way where artists can make the best use of the platform as well as collaborate with each other to bring out the best of them Wow it's cool, it's a, man. It's selling me. Yeah. I'm ready to go to Adobe World. Yeah. I love the colors. Yeah, the colors are good. I, I think the that scheme, it's a cool the, design. The feel is fun, yeah. Fun. Um, I'd love to see it mocked up, maybe. Or yeah. Or maybe more of like a user flow. More more, more context, again. Yeah. Just add in a little story. Like, why why did you do that? Um, it was just, just, just to, to um, stretch a certain skill set mm -hmm. of yours. Um, is it is it a fictive project versus a real project? Right. I would probably just um, add in a bit more context. And I could see this type of logo, like this is a winter. This would be cool to do for all the seasons, I think. Yeah. Winter, a fall, just change. summer, yeah. you know, spring. And you have a series yeah. like uh, four up. Yeah, I would, like that. that would be insanely cool. So if you have time to work on something like that, that would be awesome. Yeah, I think this good is feedback, guys. amazing. Yeah. All right, I think that's all the time we have to review Tanmoy's work again. Good work. for you. Yep. Thank you for sharing with us. Um, I'm thoroughly <laughs> impressed by your illustration and design skills. And I hope you found this useful the same way that G2 did. Yeah. So with that, we're running out of time a bit, yeah. but I think probably what we should do is just give them a quick overview of what you've worked of everything. on this yeah. week. Cool. You yeah. can maybe take them through the app and then we'll just go ahead and close up. Perfect. So yeah, this week was all about making a uh, mobile app experience for a music festival, a Bowie a focus music festival. So we started on day one by showing a lot of the research and we dig them, uh, dig pretty deep on doing a experience map of a music festival to allow us to see the ups and downs and how people feel within that um, experience. We use uh, emojis to add a lot of character and um, some fun, fun in there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, after that, we showed how you uh, you can do research by not even being a pro researcher. So doing some really guerrilla style research by asking people on Instagram. Mm -hmm. You can see already some trends building. Uh, a lot of mentions were around the building an interactive map. That would be a cool feature. And also the mentions around building your own lineup and schedule. Right. Um, then we really, really went deep. And we also asked the chat, like, what would be some yeah. cool feature that could live inside of a um, uh, music festival app? So we went ahead and, and list those uh, out and we also map them against the time. So maybe some features are more important before the festival, during the festival and after the festival to show, to show that this app will always uh, provide you the, the right content in the right context. Mm -hmm. um, then we showed some of the uh, mood boards that Kristen uh, put together. We had some cool sketches there. Um, that really uh, allowed me to guide my designs over the last uh, three days. Right, which um, led to the development of this app. Yeah, so <laughs> we then designed some cool stuff here. We have, um, on day one, we did some uh, fun animation, uh, slider animation with auto-animate and on-drag interaction. Mm -hmm. See some subtle uh, 
parallax looking effect here and then zoom in back and then on tap we had that detail view here the set list that it will play nice, nice. so that was uh, pretty much on day one then yesterday we uh, did some we did some designs around wait I'm, we did the home screen during the festival so uh, we also got a really fun ticket coming mm -hmm. from the chat so during the festival we would put your ticket all the time there in case you need to to scan it somewhere on tap you could see that it would show the full festival ticket come back uh, and then we also did a uh, lineup build your experience lineup builder mm -hmm. Uh, so as you scroll down, you could see all of the, the different bands playing. Clicking on the bolt would just favorite it. The animation needs some work there, and we're gonna we we could play even more. But this was just uh, as a proof of concept. Yep, yep. And then today uh, we built a interactive map. So we really focus on the map experience. So um, we had a full map design in the, uh, in Photoshop, and mm -hmm. then. Um, really, really to, to show uh, the different venues of the festival, the different stages. So you can see that I made some, some fun auto animate. We had a massive map in the background that we just shifted and zooming in and out. So right. that way people, um, that way you could create that, that effect. Mm -hmm. And then we finished by the oh. voice interaction that we, we kind of made, but um, we, we had that find my friend interaction. Yeah. It was not fully working at the end, but we can see that we're all there at the festival. Uh, Paul's at the cocktail bar. Paco is <laughs> enjoying uh, his, his, his the life at the campground. And uh, Gus is at the Stardust room. So uh, I hope it had a lot of reality uh, about this overall concept. It was a blast to be on the creative it was campaign. Seriously, our pleasure. All the like, time. So You uh, crushed it this week. <laughs> Thank you. Thank the you. app is amazing. And if this festival does happen, I hope this becomes We're, a real thing. Yeah, as yeah. a starter, at and, least. So. I mean, thanks for being with us. It, yeah. like, you put a lot of work and effort in your projects this week, and I'm sure everybody feels the same way that's watching. Yeah. You did a great job. Always fun. Thank you. And thank you all for tuning in. Thank you on the chat. Thank uh, you for follow being Claude active. Follow everywhere, Picho, at Picho on Instagram and Twitter, and you can find all of his links in chat here in a second. And stick around. We'll be live with Paul and Caitlin, who will be creating yes. motion graphics for the Are You Out There Music stay Festival. Stay there. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. See you soon. All right.